Good morning once again. It is time for our Monday morning high five. Myself, Richard, my brother, um, we are continuing in the book of Judges. Judges chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 11 through 24. Um, the heading in our Bible, you might see it in your Bible as well, says the call of Gideon. So God is going to call Gideon into action to do something about uh, Midian. What's even just kind of in the way of summary, what's interesting about this is if you look at verses 8 through 10, the ones that we covered last week, there was a prophet speaking to Israel about the fact that, hey, this Midian situation is because you you wouldn't obey God. You wouldn't obey him. While this prophet is speaking to the people, God is speaking to Midian. And this was the point you and I had talked about, Richard, how sometimes God isn't talking to you about the solution, but right. he is talking to somebody. You know, this is one of those cases. He's just letting the people know you messed up, but they don't realize I'm talking to the solution right now. And yeah. that's where we get to Gideon. So um, verse number 11, the angel of the Lord comes and he meets with Gideon. Gideon is hiding from the Midianites. He's in a wine press and he's threshing wheat. That doesn't, that may, you know, it doesn't sound like anything to us because we're like, we don't thresh wheat. <laughs> we don't have <laughs> wine presses. Doesn't sound like anything. But the whole idea of threshing wheat, Richard has talked about it before. The idea was you would throw the wheat up into the air. Like, so you usually, you want it to be in an airy place right. somewhere where you could throw the you want the the way that they threshed wheat was basically using the power of the wind. So you throw up the the grain, and it would, you know, the heavy stuff would fall back down, and the wind would take the the chaff, the stuff you didn't want, away. If you can imagine, if you're in a wine press, which was depending on how they, you know, this particular wine press, it most wine presses were something kind of like a pit. It's in underground almost, like where you couldn't be seen from far away. At this time, if Midian saw you threshing wheat, they know, oh, your harvest just came in. Let's go get that. And right. so Gideon is hiding from them. He doesn't want them to know, like, I have wheat. <laughs> so he's underground trying to thresh this wheat. And the angel appears to him and says, uh, what does he say? Uh, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon says back to him, um, no disrespect. But I, don't, I don't know how true that is. I don't understand why this is happening to us as a nation, to us as a people. Um, you know, I we heard of all these great things that God has done in the past, how he brought our forefathers up out of Egypt. Um, but it looks like the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord tells him, go in this might of yours and save Israel. I'm sending you. And the if you read this, there's a lot of different, it almost sounds sarcastic. <laughs> like, okay, you're, you're strong. Go, go save Israel. <laughs> you know, the God... If God can't do it like you do it, it almost sounds like that. Or like I, I was reading through different translations and some translations make it sound more like you do have might and I'm using you to save Israel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, different. Very interesting. It's an interesting story, right? Interesting call of, of Gideon. Um, Gideon explains to God because God didn't know. Right, God was wasn't aware <laughs> that Gideon, his tribe is what does he say? Uh my clan is the weakest, 
in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. And God says, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to use you to strike Midian and you're going to defeat them like one man. Um, and so then Gideon says, OK, if I have found favor in your sight, I want to use this as a sign to know that you're really speaking with me. I want to go home and prepare a, a present or a gift for you. And, uh, you know, will you wait here while I do that? And this angel says, I will wait until you come back. Gideon goes to his house. He prepares a young goat. He prepares an ephah of a ethah, ethah worth of unleavened cakes. He brings them back. He sets them down on the rock. The angel tells him to set it on the rock. The angel touches the rock with the tip of his staff and flames consume the, the gift that um, Gideon has presented. And th it's at this point, Gideon kind of realizes, you know what? Uh, I'm speaking to the angel of the Lord or God himself. I This person represents God, either represents him or is God. I'm not sure which one. But either way, usually you can't see God and live. This person that he was talking to, he could see him. It wasn't a vision. It was the actual person. Um, so he says, um, you know, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. And then verse 24 Gideon builds a, an altar to God, and the the name of the altar is, or he calls the the name of that place, Jehovah Shalom, or you can see the translation in the ESV that says the Lord is peace. Um, and you know we say that in our day and time, oh, you know that's one of the names of God, Jehovah Shalom, but it meant something entirely different to Gideon. It was yeah. it was an actual like. I am so glad that God is at peace with me because otherwise I feel like I'd be in danger. So that's kind of the, the quick summary version. Um, not really that quick, but the summary version <laughs> of these verses. Richard, what did you want to share? Um, what, what kind of stood out to me and just kind of caught my eye was 13 where Gideon asked the question. So the angel appeared to him and said, mighty, uh, oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, the Lord is with you, oh, mighty man of valor. And to think about the situation that they're in, like nobody is going to look at Gideon's life and say, the Lord is with you. Mm. Like looking at their situation of being starved out, of being oppressed, um, hiding from this other nation who serves other gods, but you supposedly serving the mighty God of Israel, like nobody's going to look at you and say the Lord is with you because automatically you kind of assume if the Lord is with you, then you wouldn't be in such a bad situation. You wouldn't be in such of a bad state. Um, but that's how the, the angel appears to Gideon. And Gideon's response is, Please, oh, in the ESV, it says, please, sir, if the Lord mm -hmm. is with you, he asks three questions. All right, so Gideon, after hearing the Lord is with us, Gideon responds with three questions. And um, the angel doesn't answer any of the three. Right? <laughs> he asks three questions of why is this happening and if this and if that. And that also just kind of made me think um, sometimes, like, it doesn't say whether Gideon like rebelled against God and started serving other gods. It, you know, it doesn't say that. Um, but because he is part of Israel and maybe Israel as a whole uh, turned and rebelled against God because he is part of Israel, he now has to also kind of suffer with Israel. Um, and so it, it's I think it's interesting uh, in scripture how we see that sometimes because even with the previous generation of children of Israel, there was 10 people who caused the whole generation over 20 to have to suffer. 
Yeah. Like it doesn't say because the 10 came back with the report saying we can't do it. And we know some of that spread, but we don't hear of, you know, I'm sure there were maybe one or two people over 20 who like believed with Joshua and Caleb. But at still, that was the way sovereign God chose to handle it. And everybody over 20 had to perish. Everybody had to die. Um, and so we see sometimes like just being a part of a group, you can suffer the same consequences, although you may not have like participated. Um, and like I said, it doesn't really say it whether he, but the way he's, he's like asking these questions, it makes it seem as if like, why is God doing like he's because he's asking like, why is this happening to us? Like he has no idea why they're being <laughs> oppressed. Like mm -hmm. I, I just came out of the temple. I was I was serving and all of a sudden I'm being chased. And like it doesn't say, but just that question of asking, like, why is this happening to us? It to me, it it, it kind of makes the assumption like I maybe I was doing what I was supposed to do. Like, and I don't understand why this is happening. You know, I still serve God, I still believe in God. Like, I don't understand why this is happening to us. Um, and so yeah, so he asked these three questions. He doesn't get an answer, but the angel says, you know, like, like you kind of pointed out, it says, uh, 14 and the Lord turned to him and said, go in the might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. So like that, that might, maybe that, that tension I'm kind of sensing in you, um, like go in that and you're going to go save Israel. <laughs> and then it, it seems like it, it kind of changes like, well, no, 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 I'm, I'm small. And how can I do that? And. <laughs> You know, no, you were just, you just had questions and I'm giving you the answer. You're the answer. Like, you know, right. Um, and I think that too, as I'm, you know, saying and thinking about it now, I think sometimes that does change people's demeanor and perspective. Like when they're complaining about stuff or asking all these questions and then we, okay, well, you go fix it. You go solve it. Well, oh, no, no, I can't do it because, you know, and then all the, you know, the things come out um but i just that the the questions that he was asking it stood out to me just that first question of why is this happening as if he had no clue no idea and like i say maybe he knew what other people in israel were doing but maybe he wasn't a part of that you know and asked like why is this happening to everybody you know why where is god you know so yeah that that question stood out to me right right um for me the the uh the scenario that i kind of looked at that kind of caught my attention was this exchange between uh the the later exchange between gideon and the angel where he says um you know um if i have if now i have found favor in your eyes then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And the angel says, I will stay till you return. So number one, just the patience of God as he's dealing with Gideon. Like he, he is not um, unaware of who Gideon is. He knows that like in... And really, that's, you know, as as you look at the entire life of Gideon, the this the ministry that he's called to by God to be a judge to to that God is going to use him to defeat the Midianites. He it, it's all about Gideon reconciling his personal weakness with the strength of God, mm. you know, and, and like Richard would say, I think that. It's that that struggle that really all of us have to, in, at some way, in some way, shape, or form, all of us have to deal with that when it comes to God, that I know me, right? I think I know me. I think I know what I'm capable of. I think I know what I can do, what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel like I know me. And sometimes God will come to you who think you like, I know me, but God is coming to me and asking me to do something that does not fit with my 
idea of me. Like, what, God, what? I am not, you're calling me a mighty man of valor. I am not a mighty man of valor. <laughs> like, I, I am the last person you should be coming to, like, you know, to start a war with a whole, day. like, that's not yeah. me. I can't, I'm, I'm weak. I am the weakest. I am the smallest. I, I don't have that. I can't do that. And yeah. God is going, so you mean to tell me? I traveled from heaven to specifically come to you and you think that what I'm the the thing that I have already chosen and equipped you to do you can't do that's that's what you're telling me like you know you know you better than I know you is that what you think even though I created you yeah and I, it sounds silly when we say it, right? It sounds silly, you know, especially when other people are doing it. We go, come on, God knows what you can do. But it's like Richard said, it's a totally different thing when God says, okay, I'm sending you. Oh, wait, oh, whoa, whoa. I, now I could give you a bunch of references. So people right. would be much better at this, okay? But me? No, that's that's not that's not something I'm capable of, right? <laughs> Long story short, though, it's it's so fascinating how, again, God knows Gideon. And so Gideon is going to ask, this is the first of a couple of signs that Gideon is going to ask for. And so he says, can you just wait here till I go home? I'm going to prepare a meal. I'm going to bring it back. And the angel says, I will stay here until you return. However long it's going to take you to prepare this meal. You know, it is like Richard and I were talking before we started. It wasn't that Gideon had it in the refrigerator. He was just going right. to run and like take it out and bring it back. It says he had to prepare this meal. All right. That's number one. But number two, the part that really like I'll just present it because I don't I don't know exactly, you know, what point it. <laughs> I, I, I'll just present it to you, right? So in verse 19, it says, So Gideon went into his house and prepared a young goat and unleavened cakes from an ephah of flour. And so it's this measurement, an ephah of flour. I have a little note, a little note in my uh Bible. It says an ephah was about three-fifths of a bushel or 22 liters of flour. This is a I, you know, even those measurements, you may be like, okay, I still don't know. That's just, it's a significant amount of flour. And why do I say that? Because you have to go back to when we first see Gideon. He's in a wine press trying to hide food from Midian. Food is at a, a premium right now. Food, they, they might as well be in a drought. They might as well be in, you know, where... uh I'm trying to think of what's the word? Uh, uh, famine. They might as well be in a famine right now because that's how relentless Midian is at taking food from them. Yeah, they are trying to starve them out. They they are trying to take over by just attacking their their food supply at every opportunity. And yet, what we see in Gideon is, I'm not going to present something to God that is not significant. Like, I'm not going to give God, you know, just a little bit. Just, well, look, God, you already, you saw, you when you met me, I was in the <laughs> wine press. So you already know, um, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a throw some, some leftovers together for you. And, you know, hopefully, but no, he, he actually gives a significant portion of his flower and, and uses a young goat. The, like, this is, He's not, he's not holding back, which mm -hmm. says something about Gideon. Like, I don't, you know, maybe I, I may not be a warrior, but God, I'm not going to skip on what I can present. Yeah. I'm going to give you what I can, you know, the, the best gift that I can present. Um, and, you know, he, he presents it and God accepts it. Um, and I think it just, it goes, it, as we continue to see the life of Gideon, how God is working with Gideon. I think he's just building him up step by step, 
by step. Um, and I think it's the same with us, even though a lot in a lot of situations, we think things are like, oh, well, I mean, that's nothing big. You should be growing faster than that. You should be beyond that. And sometimes God is just like, look, I it's I know who you are. Right. Like, I need you to really like let that sink in, like really just allow that truth to saturate you. I know who you are and I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to leave your comfort zone, but I, like he's the first words out of God's mouth is I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Like I'm, I'm not setting you up for failure. I'm not, you know, just telling you a whole bunch of things. Then when you get out on the battlefield, I would be like, <laughs> he believed it. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> he gonna die. <laughs> like that's not what God is doing. Yeah. God says, I'm with you. And so if I have to build you up slowly, if you if if you just demand that I show you multiple signs because you're just worried and you you don't know if if if, if I'm really using you, if I'm really choosing you, I'm I'm gonna work with you. Yeah. I'm going to work with you because I know you. I know you and I've I've promised to be with you. So whatever it takes, baby steps. If if you need to go home and prepare a whole meal, I'll wait. I how you know, we were laughing. We don't know how long it took. Like maybe he messed up the first meal. Like, oh, I burnt the goat. Oh, I need a goat. <laughs> I can't give this to God. Like, we right. don't know how long it took. We don't know how long the angel was waiting, but the angel promised him, I will stay here till you return. Because for whatever reason, Gideon's faith needed that. He needed God. Just I just humor me, God. Just, you know, can you just stay here until I come back? Yeah. God said, no problem. I'll work with you. And I think sometimes we really we underestimate God's um, love for us, his His knowledge of us, because we think, now nah, I know me. And God's going, you you don't know you as well as I know you. Like, right. I know you from the, from the beginning all the way through the end. I know exactly who you are, who you will be. You know, I, I know it all. You just, yeah. I need you to trust me. Like, I know you want me to trust you that you can't do it, but I need you to trust me that you can do it. Yeah. Just uh, along those lines of what you're saying, talking about like knowing I was listening to somebody and they were talking about like just, you know, iPhones. Like, you know, we use iPhones daily. Um, most of us that have them, I don't, Eric, sorry. Yeah. yeah um, we do. We don't. We, we, we is a strong term. Like most some, most some people of us who are saved most use people, iPhones. Uh, who use iPhones? Like you, you understand it. You you have it. You know you use it, and you really think you know it, right? You know it, it's like something you use. You you interact with it every day. You, you know it, but like the developer of Apple, the one who made Apple, like they know the phone. They know all the ins and outs of the phone. They know what it can do, what it can do. Like we use it to do what we want to do with it, but like they know because they created it, they made it, you know. And it's the same way, like we think we know ourselves because we interact with ourselves daily. We, you know, do different things. But God, the creator of us, the creator, you know, who built us for the a specific purpose and reason, he knows things that we don't know. He knows right. back doors. He knows, you know, <laughs> our, our capability, our capacity, you know, to do with things that we don't even know we can do. And so, right. yeah. 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 Very true. And, and I think, you know, that we say it all the time. We hear it all the time. But the truth of it is so much of the focus of the gospel message, so much of the focus of the Bible and the message that the prophets were continually, you know, speaking. We hear Jesus say it over and over again. The the 
the focus really is about trusting God. Like, can we get ourselves to a place where we can trust God? Mm-hmm. And and it, it's it sounds again, we hear it so much, it sounds so simple. But the reality is, I th- even God knows how challenging that is for us to trust in a God who is a spirit who we have not seen, like <laughs> trust him over and above all of these things that we do see, that we yeah. do think we understand how they work. You know, the if a doctor tells you you have cancer, you feel like I understand how that works. It goes from stage one all the way up to stage four, and then you get really sick and then you pass away. That's how cancer works. I understand that. Now, if God comes to me and says, I'm going to heal you, I don't understand how that works. Like what how God? Like with what? Are you gonna use radiation? Are you gonna use you know, like, um, what is it? Um, chemo, chemo, chemotherapy. Are you going to, you know, we're cutting the, the cancer. How, how are you going to heal? Cause I don't understand. I understand yeah. how the, how the disease progresses. I understand how it causes death. There's, yeah. you know, the statistics are, are high on deaths from cancer. I, I know that process, but I don't understand, you know, you say, trust you. But I don't understand how or why or well, how are you going to do it? And God yeah. is saying, I, I get it. I, I can understand how challenging that is. But yet the message over and over and over again is have faith in God. Trust God. Believe God. This whole book is written and get and, um, it's been preserved for us throughout, you know, centuries for us to get the message. You can trust this God. Look at his reputation. Look at what he has done. And just to full circle it, unfortunately, many of us are just like Gideon. Well, I mean, we heard what God has done before, but I haven't seen it. I don't understand why these things are happening to me. Yeah. Right back in Gideon's shoes. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, I, I got a Bible. I know what God says he can do, but I just, I haven't seen it. God is going, like, look, I, I understand. I, you know, I honestly understand. Yet yeah. I'm still challenging you. Will you trust me? If you trust me, you can see something different. But if you don't trust me, you, you're right. You won't see anything. You, you will continue to see what you've always seen. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they can tell, but yeah, this is a really interesting story. Even when we don't have answers for some of these, <laughs> you know, it's it's just it's an interesting discussion because it's still so relevant. Like you're right. not talking about something that just happened to Gideon, just happened in, you know, Israel's day. It's mm-hmm. still so relevant. It this this dealing with our weakness versus God's strength with his knowledge of us versus what we think we know about ourselves. There's that constant, like, you know, trusting him versus trusting what we can see, you know, that whole walk by faith, not by sight. It, all of that is, is so, it's still so relevant. And so, yeah, we will continue to look uh, at the life of Gideon as we continue to to go through the book of Judges, um, you know, and the comment section will be open. If you, you know, agree with us, disagree with us, have something to add, you know, maybe a part of the, you know, this section of scripture that we didn't touch on, you know, that's, I we always say it, that's the intention. That's why we do this is because yeah. we want to inspire you to see it, you to encounter it, you to, you know, uh, develop your thoughts and your feelings about it. Don't just agree or disagree with us, even though we want you to come up with it, something, so. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 
we'll continue in Judges next week. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your Monday.